going to have a look at how to set up some 3D views. We're going to start by setting up a perspective view. Now there's two different ways that we can set up a perspective view. Uh, we're going to use the explore tool at the moment. Once we're in the view, 3D view options, perspective mode, this doesn't work while we're in axonometric, but as long as we're in perspective mode, we can then use the explore tool. The explore tool allows us, if you're following these commands, 3D Explore. Uh, when I'm moving my mouse, you might see that some stuff disappears. That's based on just the complexity of the model and surfaces sometimes. Um, I'm moving my mouse, or in my case, moving the ball on my mouse in order to pivot, turn my head, but in, in this case, the camera or my body's not moving. Then if I'm using the keys, I like using the arrows. So uh, I guess up is forward, uh, bottom or down is back left and right moving side to side. If I want to move left, I, I might have to turn and then move forward. And if I hold shift, that speeds up the process. So this allows me to, with a combination of keys, move around the site to a point where I'm happy. Uh, space bar, moving up, the letter C to move down to a point where I want. So I can visually represent quite well what I'm trying to achieve. What you'll notice is if I move away from horizontal, uh, the I'll just have to click out of this for a second. As soon as I click, left click, that takes me out of this mode. The, the model is restored to its proper state and you can see um, everything comes back. What I'm trying to show here is that if I'm looking down, so the middle of my screen is here, I'm looking down at the moment, my walls start to explode out. These aren't straight lines anymore. Everything is tilting. If I want to avoid that tilt, tilting's not bad, it's just 3D perspective or um, three-point perspective perhaps. If I move that up so I'm looking effectively horizontal, I can tell I'm horizontal uh, sort of in this mode based on my horizon. So the horizon should be the middle of the page. The other way to tell is that all my verticals become vertical again. Uh, similarly, if I then look up too high, it goes the other way. So we can see that these lines are starting to fall in. So if I was looking up at a high-rise building, we'd see that this happens a lot, that it diminishes as we look up. And if we do it the other way around, if I was looking um, from the top of a high-rise building, possibly down, we'd see that the line's diminishing. All that's saying is just like perspective should work, things get smaller the further they are away from our camera further away we are from viewing. So we can use the explore tool to create views. Now in order to create a view, we're doing this for the purpose of visualization. What we really want to be able to do is to save this view. So the most important thing in terms of our navigator, our project map, view map, what we need to do is go down to the bottom. Let's go back into 3D. We need to be able to go into our view map. What am I doing? keeps hiding from me. Uh, down the very bottom, I've got a folder called 3Ds, so I can right click on this and create a view. Save current view, and I'm creating a view based on my current position. So I'll change it to a custom name, because generic perspective is not very helpful, and I'll call this street view one. So that's okay. Again, this is a graphic way of creating a, a perspective or creating a view. The problem with this is that it's not necessarily geographically accurate. So to create this view accurately, what we might want to do is use a camera. So I've got a few cameras here already on the screen. I'm going to go into my camera settings. And what I want to do here is make a new set of cameras. Uh, the reason for that is that my cameras, new camera path, uh, my cameras group together and if I'm trying to create a walkthrough or fly around or something like that that's fantastic uh, but we just want to create uh, a single shot at the moment so I don't want all the rest of the cameras on the screen so we're just going to call this street view. That's going to turn off all my existing cameras. And then what I can do is place a camera. I've made this camera red just so it's easily identifiable. Uh, now if I was to turn on my trace reference, we're seeing a survey. 
and so I could pick a point. I've got a an RL reference here, so I'll use that point looking at my building. It doesn't really matter at the moment where I'm looking. I can select this camera. I can change the height of this camera, so we can see that the RL point or the Australian height datum point on this point on the gutter of the street is 304.256 meters above sea level. So if I was setting up a, a camera, maybe on a tripod or holding a camera uh, to take a picture of this house, I would need to set it a meter, a meter and a half, maybe a bit more if I could have a really tall tripod or stick it on top of something. So I can go into my settings or I can just change it here. It doesn't make a lot of sense here, so I'm gonna go into the settings to explain it to you in a bit more detail. In the camera settings, I've got two different numbers. I've got my camera Z, that means it's the height of the actual camera, and I've got my target Z, which means that's the direction that I'm looking at. So if I was to zoom out and look at the target point, that's the point. So if the target was a long, long way away, and the target was a different number, so let's say it's lower, if it was 100 meters away and only one meter down, I'd only be looking one meter down, 100 meters away. So it wouldn't actually be very steep angle. Whereas if I was to move that target a lot shorter and make it one meter down, I'd be looking a lot lower in relationship. So it's important to understand the distance we're looking in order to also understand the, the height implication in terms of the target Z. If they're both the same, it's always gonna be horizontal. Let's have a look at what this looks like before I get any more complicated. I'm having selected the camera, then going show selection marquee in 3D. So we can see that, just zooming out, we were very, very low. That is currently below the level of the house, so we're not getting the sort of result that we want. So we need to set this, let's set this to, let's just make it 306, 500. So it's a bit higher, two and a quarter meters. Let's view this now. Let's try that again. I didn't apply. Apply to update the settings. We can see that we're a little bit too high. Let's drop that down by half a meter. Probably a better height. Maybe the angle is just slightly wrong. Let's rotate this. So to rotate this, it's just like rotating anything else in ARCHICAD, move, rotate, or just grab the target and move that around the screen. So now we're looking more or less directly at the building. But there's something wrong with this. If I was to be viewing this with a, a real camera, I need to understand the view cone. This is currently set at 70, and the advantage of ARCHICAD is we can make this as wide as we want. So I could make this 90 degrees. Apply. Let's have a look at that. And effectively, it means that I get to see more in my screen. So if you've ever seen real estate pictures, what's the problem with real estate pictures? You commonly will know that they look fake because they're either a wide-angle lens or they're taken from a very low height or a very high height or in a weird angle to make the room look larger or make the house look larger. While we can achieve that same effect probably more easy in CAD, we have to be careful with that because we're not creating or representing reality. So in order to understand reality, most cameras will have a view cone of about 60 degrees. And if I was to just rotate this a little bit more, This is what 60 degrees looks like. So 
if we look at this view and go, well, that's not exactly what I wanted to see, I'm not seeing enough of the surrounding envelope of the building, then rather than changing the view cone, what we really need to do is move further away. So in terms of understanding, if I was trying to recreate, create a photo montage, so looking at my house and then with a background that I've taken with a picture, taken a picture of with a camera, um, I might need to move to the other side of the street. So now I can see a bit more context, maybe I could see the houses next door, maybe that's what I want to do for my 3D. Now, I could move this around as much as I want, all that would be very important is that I can match the location, maybe I'm using reference points, uh, boundary markers to figure out where this point is, but if I was trying to match this to a, a real photo, I just need to be careful about where I position this camera. I can move this camera as much as I want, and as long as I update this, I can then go back and just like before, create a saved view. Let's do this first. Save current view. I've currently got it on my camera. I've selected my camera to do this. Street view two. And we can see that it's changed the icon because it's based on a camera. If I didn't want it to be based on the camera, I'd have to deselect the camera. in order to create an independent 3D view. Now creating an, an independent 3D view is very important. Linking it to the camera, using a camera to create the view can be useful, but I'd always recommend uh, unlinking it, which means saving the view without having the camera selected for what we're doing. Now that camera still exists. We could delete that camera. It's not a really good idea to delete that camera. You may want to come back to it as a reference later, but at least we've got a, a saved view. Um, that's enough for this video. In the next one, we're going to have a look at how to create a sectional 3D cutaway. And then we're going to have a look at how to create an axonometric plan view. A bit later on in this video series, we're going to look at how to create white model, not renders, but 3D representations. What we're really trying to achieve is to create presentation drawings. And so uh, this series will culminate in some presentation drawings. But we're first going to set up views, um, adjust those views. We'll also need to add some more detail modeling to make it look good. And then we'll, we'll finish with a bit of ArchiCAD uh, presentation, a uh, bit of rendering, and also have a look at some other skills using Photoshop.